So recall that we're actually footprinting big money bank in our ethical hacking approach. Typically what happens here is we start the footprinting process after we have a defined scope, after we have agreements, written contract, things that you heard about before around understanding who the emergency contacts are, who's authorizing the ethical hacking penetration test and so forth. And what you'll start with here is what is known, no matter what that information is, what type of attack it is. You'll start with passive footprinting based on that information. Then you'll take that information and feed it into the active footprinting approach. So for footprinting big money bank, we, as you recall, you know that there are different types of attacks based on the information you get at the very beginning. Black box, white box, gray box. These are vastly different bits of information. In fact, in many white box attacks or penetration tests, you won't necessarily even need to do a lot of passive footprinting because that's the kind of information that you'll get as pre-knowledge for that attack. In this case, Big Money Bank wants to know exactly how the attackers found out so much information and then got access to the data. Therefore, Big Money Bank wants a black box penetration test. So for a Big Money Bank black box penetration test, quite a tongue twister, we have to start with really, really basic core information and nothing more. For example, the company name, the location, the website URL, a few recent press releases that are publicly available, some information perhaps from the Contact Us webpage, so webmaster at, basic phone numbers, a couple of branch listings and so forth. Nothing really deep, nothing that would be impossible for an attacker to get with even a cursory glance. That's where we're going to start this attack on Big Money Bank, and we're going to start our footprinting process right there. One of the very, very first things to do when passive footprinting is really just look up a URL, do a who is query, and do a DNS query to find out what those systems look like. Who is typically contains information about who to contact based on a URL. So webmaster information or technical contact information, but it does supply us with some data. For example, email names of technical contacts or people names. Oftentimes this includes uh, billing contacts or administrative contacts. So this is great, great information. It always tell, also tells us a little bit about how long the company has been around because there's usually an original date for the who is registration. Based off who is, we can then feed that into DNS and do a little bit of DNS lookup to find out what different servers are out there and what the roles are. Who is often feeds us name server information and URL information that we can then start looking up with DNS lookups. For example, with an NS lookup tool, a few different tools that I'll get into in just a moment. These may seem like really, really basic techniques and basic bits of data, and they are. That's intentional. This is an early phase of our footprinting, which is the very earliest phase of our penetration test. We want to start there because you never know what kind of information is going to come up. The next portion of the footprinting process really is to start doing some queries. Search engine queries, I've listed Google here, but your search engine of choice, if there is another search engine, to look up things like personnel listings, to look up business partners, to find product names and so forth. All kinds of very, very simple pieces of data can come up. Usually I'll start with a query like big money bank in quotes, or I'll start with big money, or I'll start with an at query. So I'm looking for email names, looking for people names, some real, real basic information. Again, not touching Big Money Bank's website itself, only touching either cache versions of its pages or other pages that point to it or contain information about it. Why? Because this is still the passive footprinting approach. We don't want to touch Big Money Bank yet directly. We don't want them to know what we're doing yet. We don't want to set off any alarms yet. One bit of note here, this hidden server names bullet is kind of worth mentioning. Hidden server names means 
that a lot of times if you're searching for big money banks URL or bigmoneybank.com in search strings, you may find web server names or intermediate server names or service names that don't appear on their website that you don't normally see. For example, you might see accounts.bigmoneybank.com or vpn.bigmoneybank.com or oa.bigmoneybank.com. Those are things that often show up in search engines because they're looking in a slightly different way, but wouldn't show up with a basic probe, even a direct probe. That's great information to have. And again, of course, documenting everything you find as you find it because we're going to feed that into later attacks. Continuing the passive footprinting approach, we want to take a look at who's working at Big Money Bank. So the easiest way to do this is go up on Facebook or on Twitter, LinkedIn, Monster, and so forth, and start looking for Big Money Bank. You're looking for employees. You're looking for relatives of employees. You're looking for people of interest there. All kinds of great information. For example, just looking around on Facebook, you can find employees of Big Money Bank, and you can usually get pretty rich information about them, about where they live in general, phone numbers, email addresses, birthdays, what they think of the company. Do they love the company? Do they hate the company? Do they love their boss? Do they hate their boss? All kinds of great information that will come into play later, whether it's with a technical attack or with a social engineering attack against the person themselves. Another interesting approach at this point, again, not touching Big Money Bank itself, is to go look for job listings on LinkedIn or Monster at the company. Now, you probably don't actually want to get a job at Big Money Bank. Who would? But what you do want to look for is things like job listings. Job listings tell you a lot about the company. What areas they're hiring for usually means where they're placing in, uh, important resources. They're hiring for, for one group means they probably are expanding that group or that group is growing quickly or they've had recent turnover. Those are things we can use to our advantage. Oftentimes also these job listings give you an organizational structure. The job listing may be posted by Fred, but it may list Jane as the contact. Well, from that information, we can start footprinting what the bank looks like, the organizational structure of the bank. We know that Jane probably is a manager, and Fred may be human resources or may be an individual. That kind of information plays heavily into how we approach with social engineering and also which accounts we may be targeting later. If we're lucky enough to find job listings that actually have individuals' email addresses, so if we get Fred's email address and Jane's email address in this case, that's great data because we know that these people may have access to resources we're looking for. They're going to be the first accounts that we try to attack. Physical analysis is kind of a useful thing. There's a lot of approaches that you can use to this. Personally, my favorite is to look up all the different sites, starting with headquarters, on something like a Google Maps or Bing Maps. Start looking at the perimeter. Start looking at what's near the company, what's around the company. A recent attack of a company, when I was footprinting it, actually revealed holes in their perimeter where they actually didn't have physical defenses. Didn't really lead to anything, but it's kind of an interesting note and certainly could have been useful in later attacks. Another Interesting aspect certainly is photographs of either the, the bank itself in this case, or maybe some employees. So up on Flickr or through Picasso or some image search, you might start searching for big money bank employees and find a number of employees posting personal pictures or posting pictures of workplace activities, parties, uh, social events, and so forth. Oftentimes this yields great data as well. You may see information about how their badges work, which tells you, do they start using two-factor authentication? Are they using smart cards? What do their servers look like? That kind of information is often in photos and kind of overlooked by these employees. A continued physical footprinting by virtual means is another great way to find out things like suppliers, vendors, who takes out the trash, who caters in food, that kind of information. If you can look around the parking lot 
from a photo a year, two years ago on Google Maps or something from Flickr, that's great information to have if you're going to approach it from spoofing a vendor or attacking a vendor to get in to big money bank. That's absolutely fantastic information to have and should be captured as much as possible. Then again, we've also got big money bank that might be physically sharing locations. For example, they may be in a mall or a shopping center with common walls or common boundaries. That's great information because you don't have to actually physically be there to look at what company is next door or what store is next door to a branch. You can do all of that on Google or on Bing or something else like that. That's great data to have, and you can conduct it in a passive way without even driving to headquarters or without driving to one of their branches. This can be done in complete secrecy or relatively complete secrecy, and it can be done without touching the company itself, remaining within the passive scope. The output of all this passive footprinting is pretty rich bit of information. It's typically a list of publicly known computers, so fully qualified domain names of systems, IP addresses of systems, their roles, for example, DNS servers, email servers via MX records, all kinds of different bits of information. A fairly comprehensive personnel inventory with the richness of social networking and social media photographs and geotagging of photographs, you can get a pretty darn good idea of who works at this bank or whatever target it is, where they work, who they work for. All of this is great information. And then in an early assessment of physical security, again, looking around the boundaries, looking at the barriers and the perimeters from the comfort and convenience of anywhere in the world. Great data to have. This is by no means the limit of passive footprinting, but it does give us an idea of what we're looking for when we're completing passive footprinting.